Nick Hewer, welcome to Times Radio. How did they talk you into it, Nick? Tell me that. Um, it was a very difficult uh, decision, actually. Not least, in fact, principally, because I was terrified having read their contract, which frankly would have terrified an SAS recruit, whether I could physically do it at the age of 78. Um, and I hummed and hawed and became a real bore. But on the other side, I felt I had something to offer being a, um, uh, a lapsed Catholic with an Anglo-Irish background, whose grandparents were Presbyterian and a Catholic married in Belfast in 1912, the year of the covenant. So I had that sort of background, a uh, hinterland of uh, anti-bigotry, if you like. But eventually they said, are you in or not? And I said, I'm in. And I'm so pleased I was because I managed it. Huffed and puffed my way up mountains. I was terribly impressed with myself, actually. Well, I think you should, it sounds like you should have been. But can you tell me what those physical challenges outlined in the contract were that looked so daunting and, 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 oh, and you overcame? Seriously. I, in fact, we were there for a week because we had to, uh, we had to isolate and in our room and only hired out an hour a day. Well, actually, I hired an electric bicycle and cycled all around Donegal to get fit for it. But some of the contracts said, Thou shalt swim ice cold fjords, thou shalt climb mountains without moaning, you shall always do these things in the right spirit, and all the rest of it. And um, I really had a a fright. Anyway, I'm glad I did it because it was very rewarding from a religious point of view, yes, but from a cultural and from a landscape, a nature point of view, it was glorious. And what about from a friendship point of view? Because you travelled with a group of fellow pilgrims. How many of them did you know or recognise before I, you set off on the adventure? And, and did you make friends? Yes, I did. But to be honest, I didn't really know them. I was 40 years older than most of them. The nearest to me in age was 20 years younger. And you, Mariella, would understand that sometimes, you know, 40 years, one doesn't have a great deal to talk about. However... We had a wonderful uh, Sikh, um, the uh, wonderful... Monty Panasai, yeah. What a lovely chap. What a lovely, open, innocent guy who talked about Sikhism. And in fact, when we got back, he and I trailed off to the uh, Sikh uh, temple in Northampton, which I was very impressed with and liked the, the generous philosophy of the Sikhs. They have a food bank there. They feed the homeless as they do in the Strand every night. So Monty and I talk a lot. Um, who else have we got? Louisa, Louisa Klein, who is in, um, gosh, I've, it slipped my mind. She was in one of the soaps anyway. A Jewish girl, what a fabulous, lovely woman. And only the other day I was with uh, uh, Nazia uh, Shazir, the um, very dry. Shazia Mirza, the, comedy, yeah. the, the comedian, yes. Sorry, and and what was the, explain to me the point of everyone uh, coming or hailing from a different religious background. I suppose it was for an exchange of views. Um, not that we were going to come to blows or anything, but actually so that we could learn from each other, because I didn't know anything about Sikhism. Um, I've got a lot of Jewish friends, um, and um, there was we had a pagan by the name of uh, Lawrence Llewellyn Boehm. He proclaimed himself to be a pagan. And it was just to sort of discuss what our feelings were about faith. Now, I came out of a sort of a Jesuit background. I don't know whether you're familiar with the Jesuits. but they I the am, and, and, and certainly the Jesuits in Ireland, which is which is where you experience the full exactly. might of, the, of their rule. And uh, maybe we can talk <laughs> about that in a second. Yeah. So, but that was that was the issue to talk. See, I came out of a very rigid Catholic background where the concept of belief, right? You can't just sort of say, oh yeah, yeah, I believe it. You've actually really got to believe it. And I never have. So I've got a problem, it's a gift. Some people get it, some people don't. Um, and I was wondering whether at the age of 78, it wasn't about time, I had to look, a closer look to see whether I could acquire this faith. Um, uh, unfortunately, I didn't, or anyway, not yet. Although, interestingly, Mara, if you've got a minute, just after Christmas, I was picked as the voice of John One. You know, the wonderful, uh, the wonderful lesson. Um, mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, 
And I was suddenly picked to read it, not only in the Albert Hall in front of 5,000 people, but also in the Guards Chapel and in the chapel at the Tower of London. And for the first time, I began to actually warm to the concept because it's so beautifully written. And I was really very taken with it. So maybe I'm at a staging post. Well, I wonder because I, I was told by someone that the number of uh, deathbed conversions is off the Richter scale. So I do mm. imagine that this is something that preoccupies people, um, you know, all of us as we get older. You know, you do suddenly. I mean, uh, you, you say at one point in, in the first program that you were changing yourself and that you were a soul for hire. Well, exactly. what did you mean by that? Well, I think that, in fact, I know what I meant. I thought to myself, now here's an opportunity to listen to people from different faiths and to find out whether one of them appeals to me. I, I was rather sad there wasn't a Buddhist there, but um, I thought I, I'm not going to become Jewish. It's just too much to learn. and I haven't got enough time. Um, and also to a certain extent, the same with um, Shazia and Muslim, the uh, Islam. Um, Sikhism is, of course, quite new, so I thought I'd have a look at that. Um, do, but I was think, saying Nick, to them, persuade me, sell me something that I can buy into. My soul is available to the best argument. But, Nick, is that because um, you sort of get to a point in life where you think, well, what was it for if there isn't something else? I, I'm still quite sanguine about the thought that this is it and I've just better get on and yeah. make the, the most of it, which I yeah. think was the position you've been at for you know most of your life. Yes, and in fact, I'm quite relaxed about it. Um, of course there are deathbed conversions. We're all known as daylight atheists. As soon, at night time comes, we all begin to worry. Um, and as mm -hmm. the plane hurtles downward into the ground, um, one might suddenly reach out to God. But I hope that I'm satisfied that if I've led a reasonable life, then I've done my bit, all right? And I don't expect to find anything in the afterlife. Really, I don't. Mm -hmm. And the, my mm -hmm. problem with so many of these religions, particularly sort of Christianity, which only goes back 2000 years after all, we live in the 21st century where we're discovering all sorts of things. We've got to accept, actually, that the church has got to sort of modernize itself a bit. You know, you can't have Our Lady ascending into heaven like a Jeff Bezos rocket. <laughs> and, and the <laughs> so, immaculate church. You... These, sort of, these sort of beliefs were fine at a time, but I would struggle with it now to be honest. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should just, they're called mysteries, you see. that The Catholic Church says, ah, now what we have here is a mystery and only God knows what it's all about. And you've just got to accept it because it's a mystery. Well, frankly, I'm not happy with that. 